So welcome back everybody. My name is Paul and I just recently made a video about abortion and I made a video that's quite passionate and about the introspection that needs to happen regarding our life and so on and what it's all about. And today I want to talk a little bit more about the esoteric views and philosophies and theories you might say about how the soul comes into incarnation, selects a body, and and all that. And it gets quite complicated. I've listened to a lot of different people and read a lot of books and so on. And then my own practice of meditation that I've had since I was young, um, kind of get an intuitive sense of of this whole process, the dynamic of who we are. And what happens is that when a soul chooses a body, it just sort of like it's maybe attracted, there's some energy, our soul, there's a consciousness involved in this universe that is fundamental to everything and it pervades everything. And this is uh, another subject we get into in some of the other videos. But basically, each drop, each soul is like a drop of water of the ocean, you might say. And it has like all the qualities of the ocean you might say. A human being is supposed to be a microcosm of the divine and when a soul gets attracted to a body there are probably some genetic memory and some kind of a DNA connection or past life connection or warmth and there's a, a lovingness that invites a soul and then so the mother and father have their sex and then the soul is brought in as a conception and, and there's a whole lot of things associated with that too because sometimes it doesn't take as we all know you know <laughs> some some people have a hard time having a baby and maybe they're just not ready for one I know some people like that and years passed since her kids didn't have any any babies and then finally they had a baby and then it was just perfect timing because now grandma could be there right down the road and the, all that so it just worked out all good so Another kind of situation happens where someone will have a baby and then a couple of years later it'll die for some reason. And the esoteric view of something like that would be like, okay, well, if some kind of accident happens and then that same soul, that same individuality, you might say, that same spark of the divine will come into the family in another way. Maybe it'll come to one of the children of the mother. You see, if the mother lost a baby and maybe she might have another child and then it'll be the same soul but this came back you see so miscarriage and loss of babies happen in the natural world sometimes because there's the psychic sense there's an underlying unconsciousness or super consciousness and it chooses a time and says okay well it's not going to work right now so we're going to abort the baby naturally okay and if that happens, then a lot of times what you can do, it's a very big tragedy. Some people have a miscarriage and they feel very sad about it. But in a big scheme of things, it may end up work out because sometimes the divine, the, the conscious has a better plan because maybe maybe it's good to have the, the mother be the mother of that baby, but the timing isn't right that great. So we'll wait a couple of years or something and then she'll have a, another pregnancy and it'll be the same soul coming back, you see. Now... The baby in the womb is said to be in the state of samadhi. It's just in this beautiful place and it's just feeling the sweetness of the internal, the, the light. It might be visualizing its future and having dreams. And it's not, it just kind of instinctively moves around and so on. It doesn't have a lot of control because even if you see a baby come out of the womb, after it's out of the womb, it still doesn't have a lot of control most of the time of, of its limb. You see, it's sort of like, you know, I'm not sure what to do with these arms here, but... I know they move. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting. I used to photograph babies. I did about 500 of them at one time. You pick them up and you just look in their eyes. And some of them are really right there. They're just ready to roll. Okay, here I am. Let's go. Let's make it happen here. Now, it gets very, very complicated because we live in a world where uh, there's a lot of uh, strange relationships and, and temporary things that happen and, and people participate in and sexuality and then there's a baby that's on its way and it becomes a real problem and what I said in the last video is that if the community is supportive 
You see, if there was a tribe in, back in the days when people lived in tribes, and maybe there's a few hundred people, well, the baby, hey, man, everybody, another baby's coming into our, our clan here, you know, get ready, it's a big huge celebration, because another life is coming here, and it's going to be part of our family here. You see? And when the family gets disintegrated or, or dissolved and has problems, then there's not a lot of emotional support for a baby sometimes. And that caused a lot of problems. Now, if you go to a country like India and you see somebody who's two, two months old or two weeks old or rather two years old, they're walking around on a train station, they're begging, they're, they're you know. But the thing is, I looked in some of the eyes of some of those people. I went to India a number of times and I was actually born there. And, and you're looking like there's a lot of really poor people that are smiling like crazy. They're playing, they got dead rags in their using the same old shoes they've been wearing for a couple of years, and they're having fun in their own way. They're enjoying this life. So the external circumstances of life are only one part of the equation when you want to have a successful life. Um, a lot of great uh, great human beings have been born on this planet in, in, in strange circumstances. So the esoteric aspect of it is the soul is attracted to the mother, let's say, and then for the first few months, there's a period that the doctors have a specific sequence and science about when the heartbeat starts and so on, and it's not exactly precise, and they're developing rather fast, you see. Um, there's kind of like some kind of seeds grow really fast, and they there's a lot of consciousness. So sometimes if you're around a mother and they're like into the about five or six months and like, hey, you, know, you can look at them and you can feel, yeah, there's there's definitely two people there. <laughs> there's a lot going on in that little aura space there. And uh, the mother certainly knows it because she can feel it. It's not, she feels the physical body, but she also feels the energy body of the, of the baby, you see. That's why abortion can be a really traumatic experience for a mother because it's the, there, there's a new, it's kind of like they're they're immersed in each other. They're joined in in some psychic internal way, energy ways. So, at some point, you know, in the tradition of the human beings, that you know, they lived in many difficult situations. Uh, you know, people lived in outside a lot for thousands of years, basically, uh, and uh, the baby, you know, didn't, you know. The mother had to do some work and walking and everything, so there's sort of a protective element. Then, at some point along there, the soul really starts inhabiting the body. It starts to really start to come into the body, the energy, okay? And then the body starts to grow faster, and then there's more coordinated effort, and that's when the baby is reacting, and they're hearing sounds and all that. Now, I was told, and I've read, that the, the, the sense of sound is the earliest sense to develop in consciousness. It's also the last to go. <clears throat> because it's just a physical tissue vibrating. And it has a, like a pulse, you might say. So that part of the fetus that develops into the inner ear on a fish, there's a, what they call the lateral line along the side of the fish, and it's very sensitive to sound. So in the womb, the baby can hear the sounds. And here's the sound. Imagine hearing that, that heartbeat and that breathing again and again and again. Just, you know. And then there's an inner sense of hearing where they can hear sounds and, and divine sounds, music and whatever, you know. And their visions, <clears throat> internal visions, pineal gland is baiting the brain and all kinds of chemicals and so on. So there's a process where a soul will, will come in to a body, and then toward the end, you know, basically the mother just kind of knows that here, okay, it's getting time, I can feel it coming here pretty soon. And again, there's the linkage between the mother's consciousness and that soul. And this is a sad thing today because sometimes people, I'm not a mother, I don't have that personal experience, but apparently from what you see and hear that the mother might not really feel very attached to that baby. Partly, even if even if they wanted the baby, they still may not be feeling really, really conscious of the baby because 
they don't have that subtle sub that subtle perception developed yet, so they're not really consciously in tune with the baby. And therefore, they might think of the baby as being kind of like, okay, well, it's just something I can just remove, you know. But it's a very complicated thing, abortion, because I'm not one of those people who think there's right, wrong, hard, fast every single time, because there's there are situations, from what I understand, that probably the right decision for a number of reasons would be, okay, let the soul, let's, let's try a second try, okay? First try, abort. It happens in business, okay? It doesn't mean the end of that soul, it means the end of that body. The body can, the same soul can get another body if it's lucky, you know? And that's another thing, that there, there's a lot of souls, I heard a little statement sometimes saying that there's angels and heavenly beings that yearn and pine for the human body, they're just waiting, hoping to come and get one, because of all the opportunity that's happening on this planet right now, and all the service and so on, and the education that we can get. So, essentially, there's a soul that is longing to be born, they're just yearning to be born, I can't, I can't wait to come out, I'm going to have, I can't wait to join my family, and, and some of these kid, kids come out of the womb, and they're like, they're sort of talking right away, pretty quickly, some of them are very, very, pro, you know, smart, or coordinated, you see, when the soul is integrated very completely with the body, and the mother's all aligned, and there's awareness, a stream of light awareness within the being, then when the baby comes out, with proper introduction, there's a lot of hospitals that are really quite unconscious in the way they deliver babies, but anyway, that's another subject. But when the baby comes out, it should be a way to prepare the baby so that as soon as it comes out and opens its eyes and takes that first breath, it's going, oh, yeah, I'm here, okay, I'm here on the planet. But it's not like that for most people. And they get a little slap on the butt, and they get passed around, like, here, wipe this one off, and, you know, wah, you know. <laughs> I saw it happen a couple of times, my two sons got born. So, the issue at stake is understanding who we are as human beings. What's this human life all about? What are we doing here? Why is it so precious? And if the circumstance happens, whether it's a natural miscarriage where something happens like that, it happened in nature many times before we had clinics and everything, and sometimes you have a... Now, that same soul isn't dead. The body, that opportunity, that particular opportunity, that body, that time, is gone. But the soul itself didn't go away. It's probably going to come around the next time, and... If it's attached to that family, if the, through the through past births or or DNA connection or something, it's going to be attracted to that same family and probably incarnate in one of those same family members nearby. If the desire was there in the first place. Now there's a lot of negative souls that they also want to buy. Now there's a little bit of something to statement here. Okay, now. From the point of view of the infinite, almighty, boundless joy, even a dark soul, even a confused soul, even even one that didn't have very much good track record in the past, coming in to take a birth here, it gets the birth. It gets a chance to come in and try to do something and change and upgrade and, and learn and grow. So, just because we don't like somebody or whatever... <laughs> The God is giving them that birth, you know, keeping them breathing and everything. So it's, it's kind of like a pretty big statement that whatever you think about them, it's like they got a life from only the one source of life. So the, the issue of consciousness attaching to a body and being born and waiting to be born is much more complicated than modern paradigms make it out to be, you see, and 
regarding some of the Bible and so on, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of really strange comp concepts that aren't necessarily complete. You know, we're, we didn't really get the full teachings of many of these great teachers because they just lived so long ago. They didn't. They didn't write lots and lots of books for us, detailed books with scientific facts in them. You see, so it's up to us to use that divine awareness that we have through meditation and get a sense of who this being is, this human life. This, who is the witness of this life? Who's seeing? Who's hearing? Who's asking the question? That The answers to that are a private, quiet, deep place and our children that come into this planet here, that come into birth, they are here to have that same realization. They may be farther along than us in many ways. Sometimes the children are born and like they're way, way, way advanced farther than, them, than their parents. Parents are clueless. They don't have any idea that maybe their, their child might be a genius that's supposed to, you know, but they just like treat him like a little kid and, you know, get him to watch TV and... If they had gone a little different route by seven years old, he'd be playing a piano. But no, no, he's playing a video game and getting fat every day. <laughs> so that happens too, you see. Consciousness of this life, what's the important thing about this life is that we can, we can love each other and we can grow in the awareness and we can expand our perception and we can expand our group, you might say, where... If a family has a beautiful family and there's just lots of love there, then there's all kinds of blessings that throw flow through the family, and then society is benefits because there's all kinds of when 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 children are supported emotionally and physically in every possible way, they bring an unimaginably great number of blessings. We all know this. We have family. One one person can write great stories or discover some scientific thing and just one person. So we never know who that one person is. So again, I don't want to make these two videos, these videos too long and just uh, bore people, but this section, this, the subject of abortion has to do with our appreciation of our life. What is this life? What is a soul? What are we doing here on this planet? And Anytime we have to make kind of decisions about something that serious as an abortion, it certainly needs a lot of deep, deep consideration and feeling and connection with that being and say, well, is this the right thing to do, really? Is this the only option, really? There might be many, many other options to let the child be born and be adopted or some other family... People welcome the birth, like, okay, we didn't expect this to come along, but we're going to have the baby, and it's going to be fine. It's going to work out just fine. And many, many people have told the story that, hey, I was going to make have an abortion, and then I didn't. And then I'm so glad I didn't. So thanks again for listening. I hope to see you in some of my other videos. I make a lot of interesting videos that aren't quite so controversial and emotional as this one, but... Um, it's a very deep subject, and I thought I'd share a little bit of thoughts about the subject uh, with you for your consideration. So I hope to see you in some of my other videos, and please like and share if you enjoy the content.